Assalamualaikum and a very good evening from UITM Puncha Alam, Malaysia. I bid to all audience here today. As we are about to begin the event shortly, I have a few friendly housekeeping notes to remind all of you. During the whole program, you are most welcome to show your best interest and be as participative as you can during the Q&A session later on towards the end of the event by just typing your curiosity or question in the chat box. Thank you very much for your kind cooperation and attention. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? The show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Honorable Professor Madia Dr. Badrul bin Isa, Reputed Director of Student Affairs, UITM Puncha Alam. The Respected Dr. Sabaya bin Debacho, Principal of College Residential in Rafisila, Zamrud, and Baiduri, UITM Puncha Alam. The Excellent Staff of College Residential in Rafisila, UITM Puncha Alam. Dedicated College Representative Committee of College Rafisila, Zamrud, and Baiduri. And lastly, all the beloved audience, welcome to the International Talk Journey in Embracing Islam webinar tonight. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to everyone. This event is organized by the Representative Committee Rafisia College in collaboration with the Representative Committee Zamrud and Baiduri College both from session 2021 and 2022. We are pleased to have all of you joining us on this lovely evening. Before we start, let me first introduce myself. My name is Lia Kilabenti Kamaruzaini, and you may just call me Lia. I will be your moderator for today and very honored to welcome all of you here. Let's be more participative and active throughout the event, shall we? Now, wouldn't you like to know more about the today's topic? As we all know and aware, today we've got the chance to hear some sharing from our eminent speaker with seven years of experience, best moment and challenges of someone who have been reverted to Islam. On top of that, we will also get the opportunity to hear what he is about to share on how exactly he used the social media and YouTube platform to introduce Islam to the rest of the people in the world. I am very well versed that we are going to be inspired and motivated in learning more in depth of Islam. In behalf of the organizer, we hope for nothing less than to encourage both our Muslim and non-Muslim friends and families to embrace and appreciate this beautiful religion of Islam, inshallah. Before we proceed, to our main agenda, it is more appropriate for me to invite Amir Abdul Rahman to lead the doa recitation. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم you one and only who is capable of everything and anything the creator of all wonders including the sun and the moon the skies and the seas and the earth that cycles in the infinite cycles Please bless us with your tawfiq and hidayah. Guide us to greatness, peace, glory, and prosperity in this world and the hereafter. Make us a responsible intellectual. Grant us with a valuable knowledge that will be beneficial to mankind. To gain your mardotillah. Make us your righteous servant that follow your commands and neglect the sinful act. Please forgive us for our wrongdoing. Ya munzilal barakat. Bestow peace to our beloved country, Malaysia. Preserve us from any threat and disaster, neither man-made 
no natural disaster. And to you, Ya Allah, we ask for security and prosperity upon us, our leaders in our country. Bestow patience in us for us to face challenges from you. Please accept our deeds and please reward us accordingly. O oh Allah, the one who breathes life and takes souls. With that, bless our program, International Talk, Journey in Embracing Islam. Today, Ya Allah. May our gathered efforts will gain your rahmah the moment it starts to its last second. Please put nothing in this program but all goodness and blessing. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azabana. Sallallahu ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amin, Amin, your Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Amir Abdul Rahman, for the beautiful du'a recitation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick start with our main agenda and highlight today. To begin with, I would like to introduce our guest of honor for tonight. So, what kind of a person and background does he have? He lives in Singapore and has completed his Bachelor of Communication at RMIT University in 2012. Now, he embraced Islam in 2014 and now he also actively helped and encouraged other people to know about Islam through social media such as Instagram at Harold.chia and his YouTube channel of Shah Harold. To the attendees, be ready to grab the knowledge, jot down notes if you have to, and ask questions later during the Q&A session. Altogether, we have three topics with the speaker, and the first topic and session is about to begin. Okay, I believe the speaker is ready. And without further ado, I would like to summon Mr. Fredaus Chia to start our discussion with a short introduction. The floor is all yours, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks for inviting me here to the discussion, the talk. Um, how would you like me to begin? How do I, you want me to start introducing myself? Or Maybe you could introduce yourself uh, in a short and then we will start with our very first topic. Okay, I'll assist sure. you on that. Okay. Right. Um, I'm from Singapore, like she mentioned. Um, my... Ethnicity is Chinese and I embraced Islam in 2014, 2nd of November. So Alhamdulillah, I am now seven years a Muslim. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. All right. So the first question or also known as our very first topic is what motivated you to become a Muslim? And how was the view of others around you after you actually become a Muslim? What motivated will... me? Mm. Yeah, maybe you would like to share something on that. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't introduced to Islam only uh, later on, which is in 2014, um, about 2013, yeah. That was when I came back from Australia to Singapore. I was working and that was when I met um, a friend then. She was a Malay and she told me to have a look at Islam, to check out. Darul Akam to find out about Islam and from then on it was a journey of uh, knowledge and discovery and eventually um, certain thing happens along the way and I embrace Islam <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't so much of um, initially right to me Islam was just a religion for the Malays last time when I saw you know, only Malays or Indians would go to the mosque. I don't really see a lot of my Chinese friends or something. So for me, it was like, um, it's just exclusive for uh, for the Malays or the Indians. So I didn't know much about Islam then, uh, except for what I see on the news, you know, about 9-11 and the World Trade Center. So that was when I first, you know, thought that Islam was a, a religion that was like a terrorist religion and um didn't have a very good impression of it uh, but it didn't stop me from being open-minded um i was able to um put that all aside and go and find out more about islam yeah i hope i answered your question yes you do but yeah. after but but on top of that we also have the second question which then which is how was the view of those around you probably your friends your family yeah. after you actually become a muslim um 
So initially, oh, for my family, they thought maybe this is going to be something temporary, you know. Maybe Ferdows is just embracing Islam because of a girlfriend <laughs> or because he wants to get married and it's not going to be practicing it. You know, some people would think that way, right? But um, I can't blame them because some people think that people co convert or revert to Islam because they want to get married. But uh, for me, it's different. I was very sure that I wanted to know about the religion first um, and afterwards decide even if I want to be with the person. Because at that point of time, when I met her, um, when we were starting to develop some feelings for each other, that was when I said to her that um, initially I said we can't be together because, because you're Muslim and I'm a YOLO kind of guy, you know. YOLO meaning you only live once. So I was like a party boy, you know, go out and have fun. So, um, and I, I'm so used to my diet, right? I wasn't eating halal food and all that. So I thought this is something I can never follow since it's, it's very foreign to me. But because of, um, I know I, I give her a chance in the sense that she tell me, why don't you find out about Islam, right? So I, I wanted to, okay, to prove her wrong also at the same time. Um, I was also quite arrogant then. So um, I went to find out about Islam. But strangely, you know, instead of... Um, Instead of being right, right, I was wrong. <laughs> so I, I came to find that Islam was actually a very beautiful religion and uh, afterwards um, embraced it. So my parents, of course, when they saw this, they thought it's maybe because of, you know, a girl or something. But afterwards, they realized that I was really following it closely. I would fast during Ramadan and all that. Um, I even tried to eat halal food you know even before i embrace islam and all that so i i wanted to be very sure that this is something i want to adopt in my life before i i went on and uh so yeah but my friends what my friends thought about me maybe they were more open-minded as well they were quite okay um they never asked me a lot of questions they they just are happy for what i want to be you know um of course there are some friends that don't want to talk to you after that. We also have friends like that, right? So it's okay. And I make new friends. So um, for me in life, we, we all have our own choices, our own decisions to make, uh, the path we want to choose to take. And I choose to, to walk this path. And I do not let anything else stop me because well, it's something that speaks to my heart. So, you know, if you, if you're a close friend or someone who really cares for me, then you understand that that is part of who I am, right? Yeah. I would agree with that, that people come and go. But then again, maybe you would want to share to us, um, maybe there are some hard time during your transition or conversion to Islam. Maybe there are any difficulties or circumstances that you've gone through that maybe you would like to share to us? Okay, difficulty. Mm, really, it's not... Actually, Islam is an easy religion. It's not difficult. Because if you think about it, right, it's about implementing good practices in your life. And it's a way to connect you closer to God, right? Um, for, for me, it's not difficult because I had the right mindset. Like, I'm a very strong person when it comes to once I made my mind up, I know this is what I want. Um, nothing can change that and, unless, you know, Actually, nothing can change that. <laughs> I don't think anything changed my mind so easily. Um, so for me, when when uh, I I knew that Islam was what I want to embrace, then I I whatever challenges that you know I faced, I knew that I was following a path that was true. So I left it to God, left it to Allah to to help me. So nothing can be challenging if Allah is your guidance, right? If Allah is there to protect you, if Allah is there to always hold your hand in your life, in your journey in life, and you seek Him for help, then every challenge you face is going to be small. Yeah. Of course, 
the most challenging time I would say I really can recall um, would be when I lost my job, right? I lost my job before because uh, at that point in time, the economy was very, you know, unstable, I would say. Um, and I started to drive Grab, you know, driving Grab. I have a family to feed. Um, and I don't know where my future was going to to go from there, right? Uh, and, you know, Grab is just you live one day at a time. You earn how much money from that day and that's it. And you save money for your family. So I don't know how long that was going to be, right? But I keep trying to find new job. I keep praying and uh, do your tahajud, you know, nightly prayers and your wife will also pray for you and and all that right all this are effort but in his time Allah will just make it right for you so alhamdulillah because of sabr because you are patient for me I saw the reasons why that happened in fact um you see now when there's the pandemic right the COVID-19 yeah uh, alhamdulillah I managed to find a job before COVID-19 came but before that, I was driving Grab. So you see, uh, if I continue my older job, maybe I might lose it during COVID-19. So maybe during COVID-19, I will be driving Grab, which is not say a bad job, but it's just that it's not easy to support my family um, during this time, you know. And, and, and Alhamdulillah, so something bad happened for a reason at a point of time. But Allah grant me a better job after that, which is where I'm working at today. So I guess he has his plans, right? He he made plans for, for me in life and you just have to leave it in his hands. Yeah. That's so beautiful of your journey from the very beginning until how you already step in now. Uh, but then um, I'm happy to see that you are actually um, still keep on practicing it as we all also will. I'm sure that all other Muslims are also happy to know that we have another brother coming to our religion after all. So next, without any delay, why we, we will move to the next second question or second topic, which is people are curious on um, what are the positive changes that you mm -hmm. feel when you actually become a Muslim? Okay. So positive changes are you're more conscious about how you speak, how you act, how you dress, how you talk to people, right? Uh, how you think even because you know that Allah is watching you, right? Every time. Um, because you want a guardian, right? You want someone to guide you in life. So your guardian is watching over you, right? So when you pray, you know how you think Allah is able to hear even and see even what you're thinking and you don't say, right? So like you say, Sami Allah, Huliman Hamida, right? All praises be to those who praise Allah, right? In, in your prayer. And at that point in time means what? Allah knows and hears those who praise Him, right? So that's the, the translation of, of that, that part of the prayer. So it, it, it goes to show that, you know, not a leaf in the forest, in the Quran it says, right? Not a leaf in the forest that falls uh, without His knowledge. So having said that, with this mindset in, in your head, right? You start to think, okay, um, I should be careful what I say to people. I should be careful how I behave. I should dress appropriately so that I not only honor myself, my own dignity, but I also honor the person that I meet. I should respect, you know, our, our women and men. I should be kind to others and always be helpful. So you know that all this will, inshallah, you know, increase your good deeds in the scale during the hereafter. And inshallah, you you know, you have be you'll be given mercy to enter Jannah. So from from this point, it of course transform my way of life, my the way I look at life. You know, now when you have a struggle in life, you just go and make a short solat, even go and pray, do some sunnah pray, sunnah prayers. Excuse me. Um, during Ramadan, you know, you start to appreciate uh, the lack of food, and you appreciate how people do not have food outside. Uh, the the way they suffer, so you are more you know softer in your heart. Um, and also, you you learn to appreciate you know the way of cooking, eating halal and toiban food. You know, so there's so many things about Islam to learn, right? The the laws, 
the way we pray and everything. So it increased my knowledge. It changes the way I see things in life. Um, when I was previously not a Muslim, I used to see like you know Christmas as a big thing because it's it's a Christian festival. I was a Christian then, so it was. Uh, now it's different, right? To me, Chris, Christmas is more like a festival, like people have fun, <laughs> right? It wasn't uh, so much like a tie into that kind of uh, the birth of Jesus at that point. So that also changed for me. Um, but I also learned to see, now that I've seen both sides, you know, the, the side when I was previously Christian and now I'm Muslim, I can appreciate and help, inshallah, help, you know, people who, uh, in Christianity, maybe see and appreciate Islam. Um, my parents as well, right? They are not Muslim. That, inshallah, if they have questions, and through my actions, I hope I can help them see the beauty of Islam. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. I guess you're just more conscious of of yourself and of God after you embrace Islam. I hope I answered the question. Yes, you answer it perfectly. Uh, after all, like um, like you have said, um, we just need to have the people around us to support us. And after all, but then again, like they are so curious. Like, uh, we are aside from your wife that's supporting you. Who else around you that maybe you would want to give a shout out or like credit no. them for actually supporting think... you and embracing Islam? Yes. So, the strongest person, of course, is my wife because. Before that, right, when we were friends, she was praying, making tahajuds, you know, nightly prayers every night, hoping that Allah would change, you know, open up my heart to see Islam. So that was one effort that she gave. So I will give, you know, I'm really thankful for her prayers, you know. Um, and after that, when I embraced Islam, she got, even during, you know, when I was not yet a Muslim, she also followed me to all my classes, you know. When I go to Darul Akam and learn uh, learn the basics about Islam, how to pray, how to do this and how to do that, what is what is the stories of the prophets, you know. So all this, during that study, she was there every step of the way. She didn't leave me there just because she's a born Muslim, right? You know, sometimes people just, oh, I'm, I already know all this, lah, so you go. No, she's not like that. She actually said, you know, I'll follow you. So you got support, you got moral support. Um, and afterwards, after I embrace Islam, she still, you know, guide me along the way, uh, help me to understand certain things, right? And my in-laws also, right? My my wife's parents, they are also very kind and understanding. They, Before I became Muslim, they opened up their house for me to have dinner with them, even Ramadan, you know, because I was practicing Islam, but I wasn't Muslim, right? So I haven't taken my shahada at that time, but they have already... Uh, treat me like a Muslim brother and a son, you know. So they offer up food to me and all that. So it makes me feel like, wow, you know, people care for me. So this is very important in uh, helping, uh, I guess, a revert, right, to come to Islam. And afterwards, uh, even after I became a Muslim, they never stopped to help me, right? They teach me, they ask me go sign up for Ngaji, right? Uh, and then they are even studying the Quran with me. So you always have uh, support and you're not alone, you know, like Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, the slogan of Liverpool, yeah. I'm sorry to all the Liverpool fans. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but then on top of that, like I'm, 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 I'm sure that every although all of the audience here are happy to know that you have your beloved wife along your way. But then, um, we are. I'm happy for you for that. Um, my next question and following to that, during your time practicing Islam during Ramadan specifically, how long does it take for you to actually complete it to have a complete Ramadan? And maybe you will want to share what are the hardest part in Ramadan that you ever mm -hmm. experienced? Okay. So, uh, how did I complete Ramadan? You mean the the first part? Yes. How how and okay. how long does it take for you? Hmm. See, this is the, the, the beauty of trust or, or I don't know. of or If you're sincere and you desire to really know Islam, okay, let's say I'm I'm new and I really want to know, I sincerely want to know, right? I'll give my best try, best shot, okay? When um I have not yet taken my shahada at that time, I already start to fast. I said, 
okay, five pillars of Islam, right? You take your shahada, which is uh, the Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, illallah, wa Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that's the shahada. Then you also need to do your five daily prayers, right? That is the pillars of Islam. Then you need to perform zakat, fast during Ramadan, and also, inshallah, if you have the chance to perform your hajj. So I think of all the five, right, to me as a non-Muslim at that time, I haven't take shahada. I thought maybe the hardest one is fasting. And there's alhamdulillah, now Ramadan came. Like Allah has planned it in the way where I was thinking of this and then Ramadan was like in one month's time I did. <laughs> so so uh, I said, okay, I'm going to try to fast, you know. So when I started fasting, uh, I asked, of course, that time my friend is uh, my wife right now. She said, oh, this is how you do. You know, you wake up at before subo, you take your saho and then you do your subo and then you 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 just fast ah, the whole day no water no food <laughs> all the way until you know maghrib then you start to break your fast so i do that right um of course at the time i haven't learned taraweh and everything uh, so i just uh, observe and i just like to listen to the azan the azan when you do you know, your breakfast right it's like uh, everybody is in this together that kind of feeling everybody just finish fasting for the day and now they're breaking fast together so it feels very, very united um then after i broke my fast i alhamdulillah 30 days i managed to fast even i haven't take my shahada i already do 30 days so alhamdulillah i i was able to do that and since then i've never missed my my fasting yeah um of course then i learned how to do taraway so when i learned taraway it was beautiful because uh, that time I was not married yet, so I went to Masjid uh, Grufran in 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 the east side of Singapore. There's this Masjid Grufran. It's near my house. In in fact, it's like five minutes walk away. So I would walk to do subo to the mosque, in the mosque, right? And then it's very peaceful, and there's a lot of people also who are there. And they saw this new Chinese boy coming. Like, <laughs> this Chinese boy coming to solat subo with them. Then. They are very nice and they talk a bit to you and then you go back home and you start to work with, you know, the rest of the day. And then you do your taraway and then you see the same people sometimes, right? <laughs> so so uh then you also there's a there's a it's a nice feeling, you know, just to be in the mosque. Um and although it was tiring to stand, but I was moved to tears, even though I didn't know what the person was saying. Because when the 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 person was reciting the Quran, the Imam, right? It was so beautiful, right? That you just felt like it's the words of Allah, right? Talking to you. Although you don't understand, but it's so beautiful. So it's like Allah is talking to you sweet, sweetly, you know? Like Allah is talking to you in a way to, to move your heart. So even though you don't understand, you can cry. Can you imagine if you understand Arabic, I think you... Don't know how you cry <laughs> even more, right? Yeah, so so I was just very moved by the recitation and the people around me. And Alhamdulillah, I also managed to do Taraweeh. But uh, last time, I don't know how many rakats they were doing, you know. I do, I do 30 over. <laughs> then I said, hey, this one like never end. Huh? <laughs> so after that, I said, okay, okay. I think made my mother think why I so long uh, in the mosque. <laughs> So, so I I went home first ah. But at that point in time, I was enjoying the the moment. You see, so, uh, mashallah, I know everything went smoothly lah for me. Yeah. It is so beautiful. I would agree with you. I love to go to Taraway because uh. like it's 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 not most of the time that we get to gather with our families. Like for me, girl, like prom point barely prom point or girls or women we barely it's rare to see that we get together besides during ramadan during taraway is it's the most beautiful time that i get to go to mass with my family so i i do understand how exactly you feel and i'm happy mm. to know about that but then um aside from uh the you know the sweet moments that you the positive sides that you get from um embracing islam right now um maybe you would like to share also what are the challenges exactly that you get from maybe in terms of maybe there are people that are 
still trying to convince you that um, it's all be hard and it's a trauma. Maybe you would like to share some of it that you have experienced in your life. Mm, so like hard things uh, that people, you know, actually don't have because the only people who try to convince me is YouTube comments. <laughs> I mean, YouTube comments uh, from the trolls, you know, the trolls, people who talk everything and anything. So, I just ignore. Because, you see, in, in Islam, right, we, a Muslim should not be stressed, right? Because we have Allah, we have we have guidance, we have Quran. So, for me, um, I, re I really don't have, uh, like, of course, you know, words can be hurtful, what people say, right? Um. But it will only hurt you if you let it hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If if they can, people can say anything, can call you stupid, can call you this, can call you that, right? But if you just smile back, what can they do, right? Uh, I mean, even if as a Christian, then the Bible says something about uh, Jesus say that, you know, if a person slap you on the left cheek, you give your right cheek, right? I mean, not in the literal sense, maybe. It might be more metaphorical. So, like, um, if people want to hurt you, you just smile back at them. So, I mean, that's that's the best way to stop people from fighting, actually. Yeah, you show when you show love and you show uh, that they cannot hurt you, they will just give up because they, there's no point really, right? If you, if you react and you start to debate uh, and start to fight, then they end up, they are going to feel the kick, right? They're going to feel, ah, yes, finally I got Fedoros to get angry. Uh, then they will say more things. And it never ends after that. So that's, it's better to always end with a smile. You know, they say, a smile is more powerful sometimes than an answer to reply to somebody, right? Yeah. Even a smile is already a sadaqah in Islam, right? Okay. Um, on top of that, before we move to the third topic, I would like to know, like, during your very first moment that you wanted to embrace Islam, were you in Singapore or were you in some other um, Muslim countries or Islam countries? Mm, I was in Singapore, yes. You were in Singapore. Okay, that's beautiful to know that, that someone in Singapore so actually... Um, uh, get the get to be inspired and actually wants to be part of Islam. Okay, I would like to remind to the audience if you have any question, please do write them down in the chat box because later on we will have a QA session directly with Mr. Ferdows towards the end um, later on. Okay, now let's continue to the next topic that even the organizer are eagerly wants to know from you, Mr. Ferdows. Mr. Ferdows, so how and where do you usually get inspiration and ideas to motivate people through your social media and YouTube channels? Oh, hmm. Ideas. Actually, when I started, Shah Herald wasn't really about, you know, talking about Islam. It was just a place for me to store my videos that I create uh, with my wife, right? So it was like this Shah Harold because my wife is called Shahira and Harold was because I wasn't yet a Muslim. So I just used my old name. That's why it's called Shah Harold. Um, and it used to be just, you know, other things like little videos that I create, which I end up deleting them because, <laughs> because they are like, you know, as you get better with video editing, you just don't like the older ones i don't know happens right so so um it was just like a place i deposit my videos and then afterwards when i saw a brother a chinese brother in singapore share his journey to islam and i thought wow he's very inspiring maybe i should use youtube also to inspire people because um nowadays with the digital world you know it's easy to access uh, information and uh, it's easy also to share, right? So I think if it's something worth sharing um, and can help people, inspire people, then I should share my story. So I started to share my first story and I saw that people actually liked the story and they uh, were inspired by it. And I thought if I can help one person or more, that'd be great, right? So I started to share uh, more. And um, I know people... Because I was studying in communications, so 
um, I learned a bit about how to interview someone, right? How to do uh, journalism a bit on, on TV. So um, I started thought, why don't I use these skills that I have to serve Allah, right? To, to interview people and ask questions because um, usually if you, you know, you ask the right questions, you can get all the, the core answers that why the person want to be a Muslim and stuff. So uh, in that sense, uh, from the stories, I know that, you know, there are more inspiring stories out there. And if we can share them, then for those who are looking to embrace Islam, they find it inspiring and they want to know more, right? Um, and they also want to share more. But for those who don't want to hear about it, they won't, they won't come to YouTube or they won't go and search for it, right? So um, I just do my part as a Muslim and to use my skills to basically serve Allah. And inshallah, you know, this may weigh heavy in the skills of uh, hereafter. Yeah. Okay, as a new YouTuber, I would call you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure that even if someone like me, if I ever were like, if people just randomly post a video, you will... Like, okay, for example, you as a YouTuber, you have a lot of video you posted. I'm sure that you could, if you could recall one of the best comment that you get mm -hmm. on your video, what would it be? Mm. That actually tick your heart to actually inspire more people and want to do more videos or inspire think, more yeah. people. I think the when the person mentioned like, uh, thank you for inspiring us with your story it's always around the same I, okay comments don't really propel me i mean don't really make me want to do this i mean it's not the key reason why i do do the videos right whether the comments come in or not i leave it to allah okay um i even spend money to host all this right like Streamyard. you know how much is the monthly thing i mean if you're going to look at the i pay for it because it's just a charity, right? I'm doing, um, I don't ask for money, but if people want to give it to me, then Alhamdulillah, I will just uh, save it lah. Because I also need to feed the family. But what, what I'm trying to say is, at end of the day, I don't do it just for popularity or for people to give comments. I do it because I know it helps people. When people say, oh, these stories actually help, help me to, you know, answer some questions that I have. Um, and Alhamdulillah, after that, right, there are people who, after knowing and sharing my videos, uh, asked me to speak to a brother who is, hey, you know, this brother is uh, not yet Muslim, but he got some question about Islam. Maybe you want to speak to him. So when I talk to them and I try to do a bit of dawah, like, you know, share the, the knowledge, share a bit of this and that. And then Alhamdulillah, they embrace Islam. So I found that maybe Allah put me in this position for a reason, right? To, to help people so i i just do what i can and if the person embraces islam then this means allah has opened his heart for hidayah i always leave it to allah to do everything because this is only allah who can do i just am a tool right a person that allah you know inspire to inspire people that's all <laughs> yeah so I, I i i leave everything to allah and as long as you are sincere you do it truthfully from your heart I guess Allah will have His way of working things, and 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 that's how I I, I guess YouTube became a platform for me to to share Islam. Yeah. Speaking of how you actually interviewed people on Islam mm -hmm. and just to get to know more about maybe other people's experiences, maybe you would like to share to our audience today what are the best out of all um, experience or maybe anything that you capture that you still remember and you would like to share to us from your interview? You mean the best Without interview I've done? Yeah. Okay. Anything that you could grab? Mm. Well, everybody has very inspiring story, you know, to be honest. But, you know, not everybody is eloquent, meaning um, they might be have inspiring story, but they when they share, it's of course hard for them to put into words because... It's something that maybe touched them deeply. And I won't discount uh, the kind of inspiration they are, they have from Allah, you know. Um, but of course, as a human, right, I, I certain things will attract me more. 
course, right, we have certain things we like more than others. So uh, I would say there's a story by a British lady. Uh, her name is Nyla Edwards. Uh, she's also a filmmaker. Maybe because of her occupation and all, I kind of uh, get similar similar uh, connection. Um, and also she she had this really inspiring uh, last message before she she left the live streaming. So she she shared about um, what inspired her and how to inspire people in the future, young Muslims to come to Islam and stuff. So all that. So I, I thought the way she put her words were really, very really nice. And that, that caught me. The most recent one that is coming up uh, this Sunday on my channel is uh, Singapore Airlines cabin crew former. So she last time used to work for Singapore Airlines. So, you know, she get to travel the world and see what does, right? Um, but she become a business woman and she also embraced Islam. Her story is very nice and her struggle is very real. Also. So um, I like people with that struggle and story to share because it's like, in a sense, well, very engaging, you know, to, to watch and hear their stories. It also moved my heart. So it reinforces my iman also. So I thought, wow, this is a, these are the two that I came across. But, you know, there's so many. There are even Brother DiCero from the United States, Philadelphia. Um, even the Dean Show, he appeared in the Dean Show, if you watch the Dean Show. So I managed to connect with him and he, he shared his story. He's a, he's a priest, in, I mean like a, a monk, you know, in the Catholic Church for many years, at least six years. Um, and he embraced Islam, you know. So his story was like, wow, somebody who is like, you know, like an Ustad in example, if an Ustad, uh, six years, he suddenly become something else, you know. So he, he, his story was also very inspiring. And, uh, and now he's, uh, Alhamdulillah, he's at seven years a Muslim already. So he's also, a lot of people, in fact, surprisingly embrace Islam that I came across around year 2010. You know, two zero one zero all the way until now. Many people revert. I I think all, all the person I interview all around that time. I don't know. There's no nineteen something. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I hope I answer your your question. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> all right. This is so interesting to know that you see the interview over and you know. So um, let's moving on to our next question. So the next question is: Do you have any tips? Or advice for our audience who might also wish mm -hmm. to encourage others and embrace Islam just like you do. You're speaking like from a revert, a revert who wants to help, or a born Muslim because different, right? Uh, in the sense that yeah. the revert, the revert have a, a journey of discovering Islam, whereas a born Muslim is born in a Muslim family, but also want to help to share Islam. So you you want from both sides, is it? Considering you are also you are also reverted, maybe maybe you will want to share on both sides. Okay, so for for a revert, just share your story, <laughs> your journey, and it will just inshallah inspire people. Um, before you share, always ask Allah for help, right? Say Bismillah, and ask Allah to. You, there's a doa right in the Quran when Musa Musa wanted to tell the Pharaoh. Um, to let his people go. He made a dua to Allah. You can use the same dua, which is something like, uh, I mean, I don't know in Arabic, but uh, I, I know the English is something like, yeah, Ya Allah, please, you know, untie the knots on my tongue and my expand my chest so that I may be eloquent enough to deliver your message to, to the person and may their hearts be, you know, able to receive my message. So it's around those 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 lines you can you can basically ask Allah to make your speech easy so that people can understand what you say right most importantly speak from your heart don't speak from a script or speak from you know like uh, somebody wrote this for you right um so if you speak from your heart Allah will be able to easily help you connect with people um so just share your story if you're revert um help help in the, the mosque, you know, help in the communities, help to help in dawah work because now that you're a revert, 
there are many people out there who are not yet Muslim, so they can connect and relate to your story more because you are once like them, right? Um, for people who are born Muslim, then you you can help by sharing more knowledge, right? Sharing knowledge in the sense, uh, doing dawah work, like go out and ask people questions. You know, you can ask the right questions and in, in, in school, I was taught to ask the right questions so that people will uh, give you the answers. So, for example, you know, you can simply ask, uh, you can simply act or even in a, in a way the behavior of yours to be very kind and nice to people. So ask how is it, how it, how is their day, help them. And from there, you know, open up the conversation. Ask, you know, you don't straight away jump into religion maybe. You can start to talk about their life. People want to hear, want to feel that they're being heard. So when people share about their life, they feel that you care for them, like you, you are listening to them, right? That's why they, they are happy to share. Um, so from that point, it's easy for you to then make a friend, be friends with them. And from there, talk about, you know, whether they have considered thinking about the meaning of life. Because once they are closer to you as a friend, eh, you can open up a, another topic to talk about, right? About meaning of life. Have they thought, you know, what is this life about? Why are we here, you know? So from there, it's like, like an opening for you to to talk about Islam in that sense, right? Because you can ask very simply, do you believe in God? Do you do you have a God that you worship? You know, do you, do you, do you have a religion? So what do you think about religion? These are all questions. So when you start to ask all these questions, people will just, uh, if they're comfortable, they'll answer them. And if they're not, they will just say, oh, I'm not comfortable to talk about this. So then you just move on. So for example, means their hearts are not ready, right? So Allah is the only person who will open up your heart. But you must at least take the action of, of at least starting to ask a question. Because people nowadays, if you don't ask questions, they, they will just go through the motion in life. Meaning, they wake up, go to school or go to work, and then come home. That's all right. They just repeat. Life goes on and they're on. Like, but they never stop and say, hey, what? They never stop and think, what, what is this life about? Why, why am I here? Why do I need to pray, for example? Why, why do I need to eat halal food only? Why, you know, why? All so many whys, right? So, as a born Muslim, you should ask yourself also why, so that you learn, so you know why. And when people ask you, you can answer them, right? So, like, if the Christian is going to ask you, why do you uh, follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And how you want to answer that? If you don't know yourself, then how are you going to answer him? Alright? Because if you answer him, then he like your answer. He will naturally ask you more, right? Then he maybe want to know about Islam. So, we need to upgrade our knowledge in, in Islam so that at least when people ask those questions, we can give a, a, a nice answer. It don't have to be like an ustad kind of answer or a scholar kind of answer. Sometimes, an answer can be a question, you know. <laughs> really, really. An answer can be a question back. So a person asks, you know, why do you eat halal food? Right? As a question. Then you can ask the question back, you know, why should we not eat halal food? <laughs> it's, it's an answer, right? In, in that sense and the person said oh so what is halal food so halal food means you know and then you explain so it means that when they, when people ask you questions it means they are ready to listen right and the question the thing is how to get them to ask you the question in the first place is you need to earn their respect earn their earn their time to want to listen and then when you earn all that respect and time then they will start to ask you the question you also have to make them curious about the things you, you do, right? So they will ask questions. Why, like, for example, why every time I see you uh, work halfway, uh, you go somewhere. Where you go, uh, for example? Then you say, oh, I go and pray because uh, in Islam, we pray five times a day. Now it's my time to pray Zohor or Asr. And so I take a break to pray. I speak to God for five minutes and I come back to work. So that's my cycle in in life so i feel that i'm able to spend time with my spiritual life and spend time at work so it makes me a very balanced person see simple right then people say oh so you have a good lifestyle going here right they know this is your lifestyle yeah maybe you can ask a question back right so what about what about you how do you distress yourself from work you can ask this question what 
How you distress? The person say, maybe I scroll my handphone. Ah. <laughs> or, or maybe I distress by playing computer games, you know, or phone games. Right? So, so then you say, but how is that working for you? Do you feel more stressful after you play or actually less stressed? Because sometimes you want to win in a game, <laughs> you get more stress, right? <laughs> right? Or you want to... Uh, you want to earn certain points and you start to want to fight and win, right? So, actually makes you more anxious as a person. Uh, or if you look at Facebook, every time social media, social media, also you feel like stress, right? Because comments can be good, can be bad. So, you can say my solution is actually to pray. Because huh? prayer, the only person listening is Allah. Right? So, you have a special time to be with God. And that's, that's what I can say. Yeah, how 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 the born Muslim can share by asking the question if he learned himself. So you have to increase your knowledge. Um, don't be so bong into halal and haram. You know, it's important. But if sometimes you're looking at one lens of halal and haram only, right? It's hard to reach people who never see halal and haram before. Yeah, for example, a new person who never heard about Islam. To them, even when you talk about halal and haram, it's foreign to them. It's like, why, why are you doing this? Right? <laughs> they completely don't know. So how are you going to relate to them? It's hard. Right? You can relate to other Muslims because they know what is halal and haram. But if a person who's not Muslim, he will he won't know. Yeah, it's a like new. Yeah. So so we must learn and must learn to unlearn some things and then relearn new things also, right? So that's how we improve our knowledge and um, always take a point of view, an open-minded point of view to help people. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Yes, you are question. All right. Um, just now there was a lack. I am not sure if it's my connection. I'm sorry for that. Okay, continue. Um, my, my, my curiosity on your sharing just now was... If let's say you want to encourage others, what do you think of the ratio of consistency in encouraging people and also sort of being pushy by doing so? What is your okay. comment on that? Meaning to say, if you constantly encourage and sharing more about Islam and whatnot, it can be at times some people will take it very pushy as well and they tend to not be interested anymore. So how do you balance it up when you actually make your sharing and whatnot? Well, it's... um, I would say that, you know, I always do a um, test water kind of thing. Test water meaning you ask certain questions and based on some of their response, you can know whether they are open to hear more. Okay. Um, secondly, you keep repeating this in your head. Okay, as a da'i or somebody who wants to share, it's only Allah has the power to open the person's heart, not you. So you always say, Allah, inshallah, by your will, the person's heart will be open. So when you share something and you see the person's heart is not open, not ready to listen, then you stop sharing. It's okay. Maybe it's not their time yet, you know. So you don't force it to the person. Um, I know, maybe it's somebody you love. Maybe somebody you like, oh, I really want him or her to be a Muslim, for example. Right? But that is what you want. Right? That's not what Allah may want for you. So, again, you know, Allah knows what's best for us. You know? And sometimes, you know, it's again in the Quran, right? What it says that, you know, Allah says, what you want may be good for you, may, what you want may not be good for you, and what you don't want may actually be good for you. Right? Uh, so, sometimes when you, we earn a lot of money, for example, we think, oh, Allah loves me, I'll give me so much money, right? But after that, you forget, you never do your prayers, and then you never go for your, even your Juma prayers and all that, you forget, right? Because you have to consume by the money. So, actually, it's a bad thing. Uh. It's, it's something materialistically good in this world, but it's not good for your hereafter, right? So, something that is good in your eyes is may not be good for you actually so we need to always leave things to god to allah to to be the judge right um just do your part just share remember prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say share even an ayat 
just one ayat. Kul huwa Allah huwa is one ayat. Right? <laughs> and that's it. Say that Allah is one and only. And you have really done uh, your part in that sense. Uh, so, uh, you don't have to force people. Um, I find that social media has this ability to let you share as much as you want. And those who are interested will listen. And those who are not will just turn off. Correct? Uh, and you can share to many people because it's public. So, um, I, I guess if you are fishing with a big fishing net, you catch more fish. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, that's how I see it. I, I, I've never thought of, oh, I must do something to convert the person or convince somebody. I never thought of that. I just thought, how can I share Islam in the most beautiful way? How can I share Islam in a way that inspires people? How can I share Islam in a way when people see Islam, they will love Islam? Uh, so you think you think of this and it's easier for you to share, right? Yeah. Talking of that, so when exactly do you find yourself actually ready to learn more and uh, convert? What about you? When do you find you are ready? like you mentioned like certain people will have their own time when they'll be ready for it and certain people will not be ready yet so when do you actually tell yourself that okay i'm ready for this when do you what what take your heart also you're saying when when do you know a person is ready when and, do you know you yourself is ready? Yeah. Oh, me, myself. Okay. Yes. When do I know when I am ready? Um. When do you know? Hmm. That's a very good question. But I think nobody knows you better by yourself. <laughs> Meaning, uh, actually, sometimes, right, we ask questions, but we actually know the answers already. Have you ever noticed sometimes... We actually have made up our minds before we ask those questions. Sometimes we just ask to get some form of affirmation, meaning for everybody to say, oh, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> but actually, you know what you want to do. You really have this heart to choose what you want. So we actually know what we want in life. It's just that we get distracted maybe with a lot of other things. Uh, we needed some kind of uh affirmation everybody to agree with you first before you say yes um but you put all those down and just sit down quietly and think and use your heart and then that will give you you will have the answer for your question um i think what is more important is how do you know a person is ready when you share about islam okay for me i'll share brother edison who is now amir tan who have reverted to islam uh, he's now one year old Muslim, so means he reverted in uh, 2020, right now 2022, so one whole year. Um, for me, when I know about Brother Amir, uh, Edison at that time, um, his girlfriend then connect with me on Instagram and said on Messenger, can you speak to my boyfriend, you know, he he's a Christian. Uh, he got some question and uh, inshallah maybe you can guide him and help him so i said okay i i don't mind to meet him so when i meet him for coffee outside you know then i find out more what, what he thought about christianity what he thought about the bible and stuff so i asked really because as a former christian I, I i know certain things that are core beliefs in christianity right like as a former Christian, you will know that the crucifixion of Jesus and da 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 and all that. So, when you when you ask those questions and get the person to think from a from a Muslim point of view, and and you the way you question the person, they will come to a reason of like, oh, I see, I I now see why the Muslim think that you know he didn't die on the cross, he was raised up because Allah bring him up straight away, or the the whole concept behind that has some issues. But those are again for people who operate in a more logical kind of mindset meaning they they need logic before they make up their mind everybody has different kind of way of operating in life you know some people they need to feel they believe in it then they believe some people need to see then they believe some people need to 
understand by logic. So everybody uh, operate differently. And it's no harm to ask, you know, like a simple question, like brother or sister, you know, you believe there's only one God really. You believe there's a creator in this world. You believe that, you know, there are mighty messengers sent by God. And these are Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa, Prophet Ibrahim, you know, all this, you know, I share with you. So technically, you are a Muslim because you believe in one God and you believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of God and you also believe in all the other messengers. So technically, you're Muslim in your heart. You just haven't said your Shahada. The Shahada is very simple. Shahada is just a testimony, a, a, a way of you to convince, to affirm, basically to yourself to say, ah, this is what I understand and what I believe, right? And in English, it's basically, I believe that there's only one God worthy of worship, Allah, and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. That's the meaning, right? Which is what I just said. So why is stopping you from saying your shahada, right? If you ask that to the person, then the person will think, what is stopping him or her? And then the person say, maybe I don't know much about Islam enough. Maybe my knowledge not good enough to know about Islam. But, you know, being a Muslim is a lifelong learning journey, right? You never stop learning. Right? You the moment you stop learning, then something is wrong already. Because in Islam, we have to keep seeking knowledge, increasing our knowledge, even until we die, right? So, you mean until then, then you'll be Muslim by the time you die already? <laughs> you, you never <laughs> you will always seek knowledge right um and and you know this is just a distraction from by shaitan uh, to make you feel like um ah not ready i'm uh, not ready actually you're ready you already know what you want but the problem is we don't know when we're going to die okay this is a, a most important thing okay? you, you know tomorrow when you the person is going to die you don't know maybe he sleep Tonight, he's closed his eyes, never wake up ready, right? And then you want to regret that you never say your shahada before that because you are ready now. You know this is the truth. You know there's only one God. You believe in Allah. You believe in the messenger. And then you just go in and sleep, with, you know, thinking tomorrow you will live. But all this is all given to you as a blessing from God, right? God can say, ah, no, this is uh, the last, the last minute. No more time. <laughs> It's time for you to go home, right? So, so you cannot control that, right? And you verbally say you believe. So, why why is stopping you? So, if 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 what is fasting? Is it halal food? All these are along the way. There are a lot of reverts who after take shahada, then they also just started to learn how to pray, or they just started to go and learn how to fasting. But the main thing is they took their shahada already. They are happy to be contented with. At least they are on a work in progress. You know, they're still improving themselves every day. As long as you take a step forward, Allah will always run towards you, right? So you take a step forward, you learn something new, Allah comes to you. Okay, you need help something, oh, you need to learn how to salat. You find that maybe Al-Fatiha was hard to learn. Maybe you just learn the first ayat, you know, Bismillah, Rahman, and Rahim. <laughs> right? That's the first part of the Fatiha. Then... Slowly and slowly and learn. No, nobody is asking you to learn the whole fatiha one day. Nobody asking you to learn or to you know say so many things before you pray, right? So you learn the basics and slowly. So even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Quran only came to him uh, after twenty three years, right? Many not all one time in one year or one day, right? It's over time. And after twenty three years, then the full Quran he 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 recited really. So I mean, it's even take the Prophet 23 years, right? <laughs> so, what more us who are new? It takes us some time. So, so there's no rush as long as you do your best, right? I hope I answer your question. Yeah. 
Yes, you definitely did. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Firdaus Chow, for a very good sharing session. It is very privileged for us to be learning some of his knowledge and get to know his experience today. On behalf of the team, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Firdaus Chow for the beautiful insights and for enlightening all of us about what you have gone through. However, I believe that curious audience among the attendees here today may have some question to ask you directly. So for the attendees, you may leave the question that you have in mind in the chat box on this platform, and I will read on behalf of you. So the first question that we see from Noor Najiha Hisham, if you don't mind sharing, how do you feel after embracing Islam in terms of your emotional and intellectual perspective? Mm, I find that after embracing Islam, I'm more emotionally stable, inshallah. Um, you're more at peace with yourself and with people around you. You feel that, you know, of course, there are things that are good and bad happening in your life, but you learn to accept things easily, right? You even learn to accept pain and suffering easily. Um, intellectually, you learn that, you know, you are able to actually recite a prayer in Arabic, um, a mother language, right, uh, of all the Arabic dialects so the quranic arabic in fact um so i mean i'm surprised that we could do it even i'm a chinese and i speak chinese and english right suddenly i can do another language intellectually i thought i only can do so much <laughs> but actually we can do more right um and you start to read up about all the things about islam uh so intellectually we have the capability of doing a lot of things it's just uh, whether we want to put focus on it and whether we want to make ourselves interested in in learning it yeah all right thank you so much for the first question let's move on to the next one ilbai ilyani in shira she asks may i know your thought on islam phobia think sir okay so again the world will have people who like you and hate you right there's a always a balance somewhere um so of course people are out there to sometimes make islam look like a strange religion or a religion that oppresses women or a religion that uh, only creates terrorists sometimes they say right but just think about it right uh, if really there's terrorists then all your neighbors who are muslim will have terrorized you long ago <laughs> i mean in southeast asia uh, especially in Singapore, we have uh, in the HDB flat we live. There are Malays and Chinese and Indians and everyone, right? So, if there were terrorists, then we have a problem ready, <laughs> because because they all live in in the same house, you know, in the same flat, right? Um, I just know that sometimes what you watch in the media is not the full story, you know. Um, always look at many uh, angles to it, many perspective. Don't just take everything what people say as the 100% truth. There's no such thing as 100% truth. And end of the day, we make, we, I mean, like, you need to go and really look into many things, right? Before you get a full picture. And and always ask Allah to guide you. Only Allah can guide you to the truth. Yeah. Uh, and once you have that truth in you, just stick to it. Yeah. That's all I can say. All right. Thank you so much for the sharing. So the third question by Siti Noor Amira. She asks, I saw on your channel that you usually have guests from different countries. So may I ask, how did you get to know other convert from different countries? Mm. Um, so, I mean, Alhamdulillah, when you share a story out there, there are people watching, right? So when people watch, they should share me. Hey, how about you? you know, chat with this brother or this sister from uh, this part of the world. They are just a new revert. Sometimes I go on YouTube, I watch some of their stories also. So I just try to be friends with them, and I talk to them, message them on uh, Instagram or even on Facebook or even on YouTube. And if they respond, then Alhamdulillah means they, they saw my comment and they are happy to talk. Um, And I guess, again, you know, it wasn't possible without Allah. So, I mean, Allah make it show to them that Fadawis is talking to you. 
<laughs> then they saw, oh, Fedoros asked me this question. Okay, this question is, hi, would you like to connect? And I'd like to hear more about your story on my channel because I thought it's very inspiring, something like that. So we, we, we speak and then if you are nice to them, you're respectful to them, you appreciate their time when you when you meet them as you know like how you socialize with friend you make new friend same thing so from there you ask them if they're okay to share their story and you arrange the time with them and you make sure they are like your guests they're happy you know you, you you only say things that they are happy with you know for example some people are like to have a more private uh life right they don't want to reveal too many things so you must respect that about them so when when that happens i I make sure that I take care of my guests. So just like online as well, you have to take care of your guests. Yeah. All right. That is the third question. Now let's move on to the next one. There will be the fourth question by Noor Hazrina Abdul Aziz. She asks, does embracing Islam affect your work in any way? Mm, affecting my work? No, it doesn't. In fact, in fact, um, you should not see it as infecting or affecting your work. Islam is a way of life. Working is also part of your life. So it complements uh, your work, in fact. Yeah, because if, honestly, if I don't practice Islam and I just work, 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 work nonstop, which happened before, many, many times, um, before I become Muslim, right? And that's where I get distracted easily in life. I get lost in, in, in a world of, uh why am i here oh you know i'm completely lost in myself because i rely on myself every time to do certain things so for example i uh, want to be a rich banker for example you want to earn a lot of money that's your goal in life right and you rely on your strength and what you have only you you think that oh it's all because of me right i I'm the one who spoke to that customer and I tried to make the customer happy and I tried to ask the person to invest and now the person bring in a lot of money for the bank. I get a lot of commission, for example, right? And all this is, you think it's your strength. It's only you who are doing, doing everything. But now with Islam, I rely on everything on Allah, right? The creator of this world. So maybe you meet one person, but because I rely on Allah, I meet 10 people. Right, because I rely on uh, Allah. Um, if He thinks it's not good for me to earn money that way, He will make it a different way for me to earn money so that it is halal. It is, uh, it is going to be have a lot of barakah, have a lot of risky. Uh, I will be at peace when I earn the money. The person who, who is uh, I'm dealing the business with is also happy with dealing the business with me. So both parties will be happy and at peace. And inshallah, when you share Islam, if the person is non-Muslim, they will also want to learn from a person who treat them nicely, right? So actually, Islam is helping you to, to be a better... If you are doing sales, a better salesman. If you are doing uh, back-end office work, then it will help you to not be so stressed with looking at the same work every day because then you start to have some peace at you know, uh, making a solat, right? And then you go back to work. So you, you have a more balanced life. Yeah. All right. That's a good question. So mean to say, as of your case, uh, it doesn't affect much, but more to the positive side. Is that right, sir? Yes. All, All right. right. Yeah. All right. Let's moving on to the next question by Ilyani Inshira. She asks, I wonder how do you feel when you're able to recite Al-Quran for the very first time? Maybe wow. you would like to share to us the beautiful mm. moment. Wow. Mm. So the first time is Al-Fatiha. Right? <laughs> because that's uh, in use in every prayer. Um, and I was so excited to learn to recite the Quran because um, okay, we all know that Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam uh, used is speaking Aramaic, right? His mother language is Aramaic, which is a sister language of Arabic. Um, when you recite, although in not in Aramaic, the, the, the mother tongue of Isa, you you recite in Arabic, you can already feel you're closer to even, you know, even in, to Isa, 
to even to Prophet Muhammad even more because he's uh, Arabic. So you're reciting something in in a very beautiful manner, and it feels suddenly, you know, everything comes together as as a as a beautiful recitation. So. And when I recited Al Fatiha, the 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 person I like to listen to was um, Mishari Al Fasi. So when he recited, it, it feels like it touched my heart, and I try to follow how he does it, you know. So, um, and when you when you learn the Tajweed in 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 Ngaji, then it starts to be even more precise, and then you start to you just enjoy. It's like uh, sometimes it's like a a recitation of musical notes, right? At the same time, so it feels so beautiful to me. Now I even recite to my son to sleep, right? Um, and I enjoy doing it because it's totally different. It's not like an English song, "Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star." <laughs> you know, the maybe the baby don't sleep so well. Huh? Uh, but when you do a, read a surah, they will feel like, "Wow, this is um, this is different," you know. Sometimes my son needs me to recite, then he sleeps. <laughs> he comes this way. Yeah. So I love to recite the Quran. I would love to memorize the Quran for one hundred percent and recite everything. So inshallah. Following to that, if you are able to describe exactly what you feel in three words, what exactly would it be? Three words of what? How I feel? Yeah, or how you feel in just three words? What would it be? Peaceful. I feel. Peaceful. I feel strengthened in my iman, and I feel being loved by the Creator. Peaceful love and strengthened. Yeah, it's beautiful to know from Mister Firdaus Shah. All right, do we have any more questions? All right, there you go. From Farha, she said, "I watch few of your videos. I would like to know how many years did you take to learn or study Quran?" That's first. And next one, how do you feel when you get a chance to understand and appreciate the message in Quran? Okay, so I will say for the first question, I've not fully studied the Quran. Um, I've I read the Quran from cover to cover in English, the translation. Um, I've watched videos and you know, read different parts of it also. Um, I tried to memorize the first ten surahs. Uh, from you know class and all the way down um and then after that my my ustaza i have an ustaza who teach me ngaji and so from there it, it started to you know expand more like read a bit about surah bakara now she also wants me to memorize surah al-kafi so all this uh you know step by step i haven't fully studied the quran i would say um how do I feel when I get a chance to understand and appreciate the messages? I feel very close. Um, I feel that the Quran is always speaking to you like a first person, like Allah is speaking to you directly. I feel that the Quran is able to relate to many things in life, despite different times in life. You know, whether you're in 1989, in 1,400 years ago, or even today, the Quran can still speak to people. And that's why uh, it's a miracle, right? That people are drawn to the Quran. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Firdaus Shah, for answering the very last question just now. Um, before we end our session, perhaps from you, do you have anything you wish to say to the audience on YouTube right now um, as your closing remarks? I would just like to say that um, never give up. You never walk alone. Okay. <laughs> um, main thing in life, you know, always take life with a pinch of salt. You know, be open-minded. Don't be hurt by comments or by social media uh, followers or, you know, whether you get subscribers or not. Just be one with your creator, with Allah, right? And just appreciate everything you're given. Be grateful all the time. And just live a positive life. And more positivity will come to you. So um, remember, Allah only tests those He loves most. Right? They always say. So when you go through a difficult time, remember that that means 
is a test that Allah believes you can overcome. And if you overcome it, then Allah will give you an even higher reward, right? For for doing, overcoming that 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 challenge. And it makes you an even better person. I'm always I'm not a perfect person. I'm also a work in progress myself. I myself have my own flaws, right? I still need to have to master how to be more patient. I, that's my weakness also. I have to be able to respond to people nicely. Sometimes I'm in a rush. Sometimes I reply in a certain way. Uh, may not be so nice. And I, I try to improve. But we are all human beings. We make mistakes, right? We, we should always be a work in progress and always try to improve ourselves. Um, always learn and keep improving your knowledge in Islam, in anything you do in life or so. And also learn to relate and connect with people. People like to meet you and have a connection because that's human beings. We are social people. Uh, we we uh, learn to see from each other and you know experience beautiful things with each other. Um, and, and always remember that you know the journey in life is a short one. It's only 100 years. <laughs> but the journey in hereafter is forever, eternity. So whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we say, it's all recorded down. Um, we try not to focus so much on what is right and wrong and judge other people because everyone has certain challenges that only Allah knows we don't know. So we have to always come from a point of helping and caring of the person, being kind. Uh, and inshallah, right, all of us, will be gathered on the here. I mean, Allah already said, we'll all be gathered on the, the Jashan day and then, inshallah, all of us can go to Jannah. Most importantly, that it's only by Allah's mercy we enter Jannah. So, Muslims, as Muslims, we got a golden ticket, I would say. You know, like, Willy Wonka got a golden ticket. You can go and eat the chocolate. <laughs> so, uh, we all have the golden ticket to enter Jannah because we know the right things to do. But it doesn't mean this 100% you go to Jannah, right? It's only by Allah's mercy, right? So help your friends, help your family, you know, never be too proud. Never think, oh, I know everything already. I know everything about Islam. I know everything about this person or that person. I Or oh, this person, uh, confirm one, give up already. I don't want to help the person, you know? So if you don't want to, to, to give people to give up on yourself, you also should not give up on people, right? So do only things that you will be doing to yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't don't be doing bad things to people because you don't want them to do to you also, right? So always learn to love each other and, and unite with each other, brothers and sisters. Uh, many opinions, whether you are what mazab, you know, whatever opinions we have, always remember that we say the shahada. And our hearts are one with Allah as a Muslim brotherhood and as a, as a Muslim family. So always care for each other. And even those who are not Muslim, be kind to them. Inshallah, they will be granted hidayah and be part of the family. Yeah, that's all I have to say. All right. Once again, huge thank you to our guest, Mr. Firdaus Shah, for answering all of our curiosity comprehensively. And not to forget for your valuable time and willingness in attending this event to give some sharing. On top of that, thank you to all the respected guests, academics, and audience for gracing this program with your presence. We highly appreciate your support and energy. To all the audience, just a quick friendly reminder by the end of this program, please fill in the attendance form as per the link that will be given in the chat box to get the e-certificate as the form will only be open for approximately 20 minutes. Before we end this event, we would like to invite Mr. Ferdows once again to recite the du'a. Which, which du'a? <laughs> uh, I, was, I was told that you will be um, reciting du'a for a closing event. Oh, okay, okay, du'a. Yeah. Mm. Let me see. Okay. Okay, call Forgive me if it's not perfect. I'll try my best. Okay, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La yukallifullahu nafsan illa us'aha. Laha ma kasabat wa laiha ma qtasabat. Rabbana atukhinna in nasina a'a to'na. 
ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما هملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تكت لنا به وأفوانا وفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولنا فرسونا على القوم الكافرين سلك الله العظيم Thank you so much for the beautiful du'a from Mr. Fidel Shah once again. At last, let's we all now recite du'a Rabita together. Come this together as a one humanity, inshallah. Amin. I mean, I mean, you're well. I mean, thank you so much once again, Mr. Firdaus, for your beautiful the I am pray for the Malaysian people. All right. So the multimedia team, are you ready? And is everyone ready for the photography session? Okay, let's put up a smile. Uh, on my count, three, two, one. All right, freestyle. Three, two, one. Put up the peace sign, guys. Come on, brighten up this session. One, two, three. All right. Thank you so much to the multimedia team. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, as the saying goes, to every beginning, there is an ending. Hence, our very very international very impressive and uh, inspiring international event has finally come to its end my name is Lia Kila Kamaru Zaini. you can call me Lia and I would like to take the chance to seek your apology for any wrongdoings or if I ever say anything wrong in any way throughout this event tonight and with that we end the program today with us with Kafara and Suratul Ans I end my duty as a master of ceremony with Wabilahi Taufik while Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good night and goodbye. Thank you so much to our guest, Mr. Firdausia, and the rest of the audience. <laughs>
فوق نوري أنت شمس أنت بدر أنت نور فوق نوري أنت كثير وغالي أنت من صباح الصدور أنت إنكسير وغالي أنت من صباح الصدور صلى الله على محمد صلى Sous-titrage